Welcome back. This is chapter three for my novel. Chapter three. Daniel. There it was, my boring life, waiting for me. I could open up the files, begin work, but for some reason I couldn't. Not now. Working all the time had caused this mess. Not telling anybody I'm gay had really caused this mess. Slumping, I looked at the lists of things I should do, but couldn't begin thinking about them. This was my honeymoon, or supposed to be. When had it gone wrong? According to Xander, it had begun six months ago. Were there any signs that I missed? Was there a top ten ways to tell if your fiancé is cheating on you list anywhere? How about a top ten ways to tell your fiancé you are secretly gay? Ashley and I had done everything together to plan this day. She had picked out the hotel, the location, the color scheme, everything. And when her parents couldn't pay for something, good old me had worked even longer hours to, cutting it, to cover it. Look where that had gotten me. Can I get you anything, Daniel? The bartender said. How do they all know my name? A coffee, maybe. Unlike my brothers, I didn't like to drink. The bartender brought a cup and saucer over and poured it until it was a half inch from the top. How's your honeymoon going? That is freaky. It's not, I said, and wonder how much more I would tell a complete stranger. Welcome to my honeymoon, or what's left of it. Is it congratulations or condolences? According to my dad, it's congratulations. I lifted the cup to my lips and was impressed. It was good coffee. My fiancé had an affair and never bothered saying anything until two hours before the wedding, when she was caught. That's not good. No, it's not. The bartender moved on, wiping the counter. Me? I stared at the screen some more, hoping I'd have something to do. I took a sip of the coffee, black and bitter, like my mood. Maybe coming to Hawaii had been a mistake. The monarch had said I could have used the money on a future stay. It didn't have to be now. After the morning I had, leaving Nevada for a week seemed like the best option. Now I wondered. The phone rang. Xander. Hadn't he ruined my life enough? When the phone stopped ringing, I blocked him. And Ashley. And their work numbers. As far as I was concerned, they didn't exist anymore. He had left a message, which I deleted without even listening to. Back at the computer, I opened my work account and stared at the files I could have been working on. As I scrolled through the list, I kept wondering which files I had been working on when Ashley and Xander had been doing the nasty. Ashley and I had pledged to be virgins until our wedding night, this night. Here I was, almost 23, too scared to admit that dating freaked me out, and dating a man excited and terrified me at the same time. Maybe the virginity pledge had been a way for me to delay admitting to Ashley that I was gay. Actually, I think I know what it meant, and that made me sound pathetic. Look at me, one very closeted gay college grad who was afraid to date, afraid of anyone finding out that I'm gay, nothing but a boring gay accountant who lives a boring life, drives a boring car, lives in a boring apartment in a boring little town. Reclusive, anyone? How about repressed? Maybe just depressed. A bartender came over, the bartender came over and refilled my cup. When had I drunk the first one? Maybe Ashley had done me a favor. Imagine. Being married to a boring man who found you interesting, but not sexy. The odd thing is, behind all the pain and betrayal, I felt a little relieved. Getting cheated on still hurt. The shock was wearing off, but not the ache inside. So why was I here again? Out in the middle of the ocean, drinking coffee and knowing absolutely no one. It did not sound like a recipe for fun. Another guy walked in, carrying an odd bag with a little bit of white paper sticking out. For an instant, I forgot about this morning, and let the gay part of me take over. Wearing a monarch employee's uniform, white short sleeve golf shirt and cocky shorts, he shuffled into the room, eyeing the seat at the end of the bar. Dark, messy hair, very tan, broad shoulders, swimmer's build, and lean muscles. Yeah, I forgot about Ashley and Xander for a minute. He sat on a bar stool. Hey, Barney, give me a cola. They need me for the luau. My luau. I, find it, I found it funny in a sad way. Over time, Barney the bartender filled a glass. Some spoiled rich guy from the mainland ordered a wedding-themed luau. My disaster. I tried not to lean in their direction, tried not to hear his name. For a second, I wasn't too depressed. Barney set the drink in front of him. Nice tall cola, like the stranger was nice and tall, at least five inches taller than me, and at least forty pounds more muscle. He filled out his shirt in all the right places. Is that him, Timmy? Barney asked. The other guy nodded, reached into the sack, and pulled out an odd black box. I didn't think about Ashley, or Xander, or the man at the counter. Only the box. Dad had one similar to it. His was navy blue, and I, I remember him opening it out on the Mojave. Mom. 
This man's box was smaller. A child, perhaps? Maybe a brother? A lover? Suddenly, my day seemed almost silly compared to his. What is one cheating whore of a fiancé compared to death? Picking them up was just as hard as holding him one last time. It felt like I was saying goodbye again. Yeah, I remember that pain. Giving Mom's body one final hug and seeing her ashes later. I knew what this guy felt, and I moored my mom. The ache never dulled. I felt like I was intruding on something very private, very personal. I shouldn't be here, not in Hawaii, not in this hotel, not eavesdropping on this man's grief. Barney came back over and poured me another cup of coffee. The caffeine kept me going, and it was the only thing keeping me going. What's his story? I asked and nodded to the other guy. I keep my customers' lives confidential, Daniel. His, yours, everybody. That's why they keep coming back. I pulled out a pen and wrote a note on a napkin. Give him this and get him another drink. Wait a couple of minutes until after I leave. I don't want him to think I'm hitting on him or something. That's right, as in buying a drink for a guy isn't weird for me, like I wish I'd done it a thousand times before. Don't call me Mr. Repressed, call me Mr. Basket Case. I left the bartender at 20, folded up my laptop, and headed back to see if my room was ready yet. Wait, did I just come out to the bartender? Ilio. I walked into the sand crab and headed to my favorite seat in the corner. Barney was on duty. Maybe he can cheer me up, but I doubt it. Barney and I go back five years. In fact, he arranged for me to get this job. Some guy was at the bar, laptop open, staring at a screen filled with numbers. A stockbroker? Only the rich came here. He looked too young for that. Cute, though, in that geek kind of way. Dark hair, styled, in a loose-fitting button-down shirt. On a normal day, it would be fun to see how receptive he was to alternative lifestyles. Not today, though. Not with Timmy's ashes. This was a private moment. Barney understood. I took a seat at the bar. Hey, Barney, give me a cola. They need me for the luau. Overtime? Barney set the drink in front of me. Some spoiled rich guy from the mainland ordered a wedding-themed luau. How can I perform tonight? More caffeine? No dose tablets? Is that him? Timmy? Barney asked. I nodded. Reached into the sack and pulled out the box with Timmy's ashes. It didn't get any easier. His name was on the front and on the little card that came with it. Picking them up was just as hard as holding him one last time. I felt like I was saying goodbye again. I sipped my cola, wishing I had something stronger. That's not going to happen. Not now. Not when I'm about to perform. Not ever. I'm going to leave you and Timmy alone. Between my two customers, I'm going to go broke. You and a cola? Him and his complimentary coffee. He could have anything here, free. And he chose the coffee. I guess we're nothing but big spenders. Barney left, and I stared at the box. Was this what one lifetime amounted to? I should have brought a frisbee. Timmy had loved those. Barney filled another glass and set it down in front of me. He slid a napkin my way. Compliments of laptop guy. Yes, guys had bought me drinks before, and yes, I had bought drinks for them. Barney, not now. Barney shrugged and walked away. I glanced at where laptop guy had been sitting, but no one was there now. The bar was empty. I looked at the note. It wasn't a name and phone number. To the guy who's having a worse day than I am. I know exactly how you are feeling, and I'm sorry for your loss. Hang in there. From a stranger. I looked for him again. Barney, what is this? A cola and a note. I stood and looked outside the bar, at the beach, back of the hotel. Nothing. You're not going to find him. He took off right after he gave me the note. Then he's not hitting on me? Be kind of hard, seeing as how there's no phone number and he left. Weird. Well, I'll probably never see him again anyway. Barney cracked a knowing smile. But you want to, don't you? Barney! Sometimes the old guy is too, percep too perceptive. The bar had a digital clock behind the counter. I didn't like the time. I downed both drinks as fast as I could. I'm going to be late. I ran the ashes back to my car, grabbed my costume and batons, and jogged to the employee entrance to get ready. I was not ready for tonight. Daniel. My room still wasn't ready. Weren't these supposed to be ready by noon? Instead, I went to one of the many lounge areas, took a seat, and called Dad. I couldn't call Xander. We weren't friends any longer. I couldn't call David or Derek. We never connected, and I wasn't into sports. They didn't care what I was into. Maybe that's why I never told them. That, and I was afraid of Derek. A little of David, too. Dad picked up on the third ring. Daniel, how's Hawaii? It's amazing if you like white sandy beaches and cute. Dad chuckled. Did you get his number? Dad... I know, I know. It's way too soon to joke like that. I'm very sorry about this morning. Me too. How about some news? Sure. Something tugged inside me. I've never been homesick, but hearing my dad meant so much to me. 
Ashley's dad had a huge yelling fit with both Ashley and Xander. I tried not to listen, but that man has a pair of lungs. What about? Spoiling their lives, spoiling your life. He vows that they will pay you back for everything, and he took her ring and later gave it to me. I swear he was about to have a heart attack. What happened with Ashley and Xander? Ashley's parents dragged her away, and Xander disappeared soon after Ashley's dad finished yelling. I don't know where he went. Did David and Derek stick around? No, they have hotels tonight, and tomorrow David and Derek and their wives are going to Vegas for a week, then off to Tahoe. What about you? I met one of the caterers, and I'm taking her to lunch tomorrow. Dad paused a moment. I'm worried about you. Are you all right? It hurts, I said, but there's a part of me that is glad I didn't marry her. What does that mean? I don't know, Dad said, but maybe it is time to find you. How? I leaned forward to make sure nobody was within earshot. Dad, what am I doing? What do I do? If you were David or Derek, I'd tell you to go find a punching bag, but you're too much like your mother. When things got to her, we'd find a bench and watch the sunset. Sometimes we'd talk. Sometimes we'd enjoy the view. Find that thing that is your release. Ilio. Everything's ready. The buffet, ready. The sound system, ready. Script, memorized. And everyone is in costume. One of the waiters is lighting the tiki torches. And it is showtime. Daniel and Ashley Roberson are the guests of honor. Daniel Roberson went all out. Not one of the regular luau's, but the classy seafood one with all the side dishes and the special little lights and the twin bonfires. The entire setting is lined up with the setting sun. Mr. Roberson was specific about that. And at just the right time, two doves were to be released. Everyone entered, and the hula girls placed lays on everyone. An elderly couple sat in the seats of honor, enjoying their buffet. The Robersons aren't some young couple, after all, enjoying their honeymoon, but a couple celebrating with a second or third honeymoon. It still didn't make me feel any better. Tonight was supposed to be Timmy's night. The stranger from the bar, still carrying his laptop bag, entered and took a plate, barely putting anything on it, and took a seat at the back. Time to plaster on the smile. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hawaii, land of enchantment, I began and waited for the drums. Tonight is a special time, for we celebrate the wedding of Daniel and Ashley Roberson. Laptop man suddenly sat tall, spilling his plate to the ground, his face reddened. I walked up to the table seated to the couple seated at the front table. Tonight we honor the most sacred bond known to man, the bond between husband and wife. According to the script, that was the only one that mattered. Laptop man retrieved his plate and tried to pick up the spilled food. A waitress knelt next to help him. He's cute when he's flustered. <laughs>